Greetings, I'm Shad, and there is no such thing as a perfect sword. So, sorry Katana, but... <laughs> now that is the general understanding that I have found that many medieval enthusiasts have, and generally it comes to the forefront of discussion uh, to debunk the myth that there is such thing as a perfect sword, and one of the swords that is often uh, touted to be perfect is the katana and so there's been a, a lot of emphasis to state there is no such thing as the perfect sword or is there now I'm saying this because I think sometimes when um, the pendulum of uh, public opinion swings one way that to debunk such a misconception some there is a tendency to swing in the other extreme direction. Now it's not to say that there's no truth to that statement, but I feel you do need to understand its context. Because generally, if you were to take all swords and judge them, you know, upon all their different qualities, you will find that there is no sword that is both better at cutting, slicing, and thrusting as any other sword, because there's a, it's just the dimensions of a sword do not work that way. And uh, the general truth is, is that when you make a sword to, or you design a sword, add the features to make it excel in one thing, such as thrusting, you have to sacrifice and take away features that help it cut more effectively. And so to have a sword that can both thrust and cut better than all other swords, well, it's impossible. It, like, it's just utterly impossible. Because a sword is either going to be really, really good at cutting, or really, really good at thrusting, or decent at both. And some examples of um, swords that have been designed to excel in these areas, well, great example is the rapier. The rapier is a perfect example of a sword that so much about its design has been made to have it excel in the thrust. And a sword that is a very good example um, uh, to show as a sword that's been designed to excel in the cut is the katana. The katana is a great example of a sword that excels in the cut. But the katana is by no means the not the only sword that excels in the cut. As Matt Easton has pointed out on many occasions that the Indian tolwar is actually extremely effective in the cut. I also feel the Viking period sword is exceptional in the cut as well. And these because the way they are designed. So with this understood, yes, we can accurately say that there is no such thing as a perfect sword, but I don't generally like that because I do feel it's an overgeneralization as being a bit too broad. Because, in my opinion, if you were to look at the swords, break down their qualities, and divide, you know, thrusting, cutting, and hacking into different categories, and it's funny the, the contrast between cutting and hacking because there's actually uh, people use the terms interchangeably a lot. And so, what I'm kind of meaning is a sword that is effective at just kind of a hack cut and a sword that is effective at what is generally called a draw cut or a push cut. So you have a hack which just comes down and chops and so you could essentially you could call that a chop, the chop. And then you could call this the cut, a cut which is actually it's a slicing motion and so you would draw cut or push cut and you could just call that a cut and so you have thrust hack and cut. But again, people use the terms interchangeably quite a lot, but for, in this context I'll just say those three terms. Now, if we were to divide them, I think you could accurately find a sword that excels above all other swords in those different areas. A sword that excels in all other swords in the thrust, and then again one that excels in the cut, and one that excels in the hack. Is that the terms I'm using? Thrust, cut, and hack? I don't know. I think you get what I'm saying. And so I think I'm justified in saying that you could find a sword that is better at cutting than all other types of swords. Would it be good at thrusting? Generally not. But you could, in those categories, you can say that there is the best sword in that context. And this is where we come to kind of my other point, because if we were to say, you know, there is no ultimate sword. Well, I sometimes wonder if that is entirely true. Now, it is, like I said, it's very true that you can't have a sword that is better in those three areas than all other swords because of the give and take of the nature of sword design. But having said that, if you could accurately rate every single sword according to how effectively they can thrust, 
how effectively they can cut and how effectively they can hack and assign a numeric value to those qualities and then combine that value to a total score, I think just according to physics, math, that you would have a sword that performs better, like has a higher score than other swords. Now again, it would not mean that that sword is better than all other swords in the three qualities. It, I, would, I would generally think that maybe one of those qualities might be better, but again, according to this, the values, if you were really able to test swords in a very definitive and, you know, uh, controlled way and get this value, very much like for instance, let's say the highest score any sword could get in any of these values, thrust, cut, and hack, um, is 100, all right? This is just a hypothetical, but to get try and convey what I'm, what I'm trying to convey in saying this. And so there could be several different types of swords that the ones that have been really designed to excel in certain areas that get the 100 score individually in uh, these three qualities. But the sword that actually might win could be a sword that never performed as high as these swords that excel in those areas, but performed higher than those swords in the other areas, which gives it an overall higher score. So it could have performed 80, 80, 80. 80 in the thrust, 80 in the cut, and 80 in the hack. So its combined score, even though it did not perform as high as the other swords that excel in these individual areas, its total combined score could be higher than these other ones. And in my mind, that seems to indicate a more versatile and superior sword because it can perform so well in these other areas. And so according to this kind of logic, I feel this, you know, it works fairly well. And as I think about this, I think, well, technically and logically, there would be a sword that has a higher score, and if not just a sword, maybe one, two, or three that scored exactly the same, but these swords, you would have to get one eventually that perform better when you combine all these values than other ones, and you could rightly call that the ultimate sword, or the best sword. Now, the true challenge in, you know, this hypothetical that I'm talking about is actually getting those specific numeric values because, in all honesty, so many different cutting tests and, uh, you know, sword quality tests are so, uh, I wouldn't say arbitrary, maybe subjective, but like I said, that you, it's so hard to get a definitive value because there, there are so many variables. For instance, the strength and skill of the person doing the cut. That changes between each individual person. And then once the person does one cut, they are using energy in their muscles and other things like that. And so they are not in the exact same physical condition as they were when they made the first cut. And so the second cut is just according to physics and science going to be slightly different. It's not a system that can be replicated in per, in the exact same perfect condition, or well not perfect, but the exact same conditions or, or, or conditions that are so close to being the same that you can really assign and gather a, a, a definitive answer in these tests. Now, in the future, if I ever have the money and resources, this is something that I would actually love to fix, but it would require building an, an impressive rig and uh, setting up very, you know, um, uh, setting up a lot of different things to be able to have a uniform and consistent material that you're cutting into, because again, that's another thing that changes, the material that you're cutting into. Even using pig flesh, well, what if one pig had a lot tougher muscles than another, and so you can't get a uniform, consistent result out of these tests. And so if you're doing it, and you know, like I said, this is kind of one of my dreams to do in the future, you would need a uniform material to cut into, something like ballistics gel or something like that. You would need a mechanical rig that can have, like put in a specific and exact value weights or amount behind each strike uh, to be able to then find out or to get a definitive answer as to the cutting, thrusting and hacking capacity of each individual sword. And you know what, like uh, it's funny how I've been talking about these three main sword qualities. That's that's an overgeneralization as well and I'm, I'm realizing that and admitting that right away is because there's other very important qualities that you would need to figure out when trying to determine um, uh, how good a sword is. One, how it handles in the hand, like what point of balance, its weight distribution, how fast you can maneuver it as a result of both those qualities. And uh, am I missing another one? If you can think of another very important sword quality, please let me know because these are the things we would need to figure out to answer this great question, what is the ultimate sword? And so again, like I'm saying with this hypothetical, you like to actually pull this off, you would need to go to a fair amount of effort to get some 
definitive answers to find out the answer to this intangible, mysterious question of what is the best sword. But just because it'll be very hard to figure out, I don't think it means it's impossible. I actually think, yes, it, it is. It would be quite possible. So yes, my views are actually a little bit different to uh, what is generally, uh, you know, put out there by many medieval enthusiasts that I actually think in the right context, there is such thing as the best sword in the world. It's just, it's so hard to figure out. We don't know what it is yet. And an interesting question to be very fair in regard to, in regards to you know, um, this hypothetical would be, well, is the question, would the katana be a contender for this title? Because there are way too many katana fanboys out there in the world, but at the same time, I feel too many people also bash on the katana in almost an unfair context at the moment, because the katana, it, in truth, is pretty good in certain areas, specifically the cuts. Thrusting, you know, not so much. I think, uh, you know, I get, it falls off quite a bit there. So in my own opinion, do I think the katana would be the ultimate sword? I personally probably not, all right? I think there are other swords that um, can cut uh, very, very well, um, just as well as the katana, but are far better at in the thrust than the katana is. And so just in my own imperfect analysis there, I would say, you know, I don't think the katana would win. So do you agree with me? Don't you agree with me? I mean, I'm just sharing my own thoughts here. I'm not trying to change anyone's opinion. I'm just sharing what, what, what I think about this. And I would love to hear what you think about it. So please let me know. I think it's a great topic for discussion. In the meantime, I appreciate your attention. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. So these are the contestants for the Ultimate Soul competition. Okay, I have a look. I have a look. We'll see what we have. We have, well, I'm sorry, Katana, but you are just, yesterday's news. I'm sorry, darling, but you just, everyone's over you now. So I'm sorry, you're gone. You're gone. Um, Lightsaber? I'm sorry, darling, you're actually not a real sword, so no, no, you do not win either. I'm sorry, that's gone. Sorry, darling. Uh, 30 bars of sword? I'm sorry, darling, you're just trying too hard. You're just trying too hard. And, and wooden sword? Well, you're made of wood, darling. I'm sorry, but the other swords are going to chop straight through you, so you don't win either. And is this all I have to work with? Seriously? Is this all I have to work with? Oh, I give up!